everybody. On today's episode of Madge Unmuted, we're going to talk about what to do when shit goes south and how much fun it is to crawl back out of that shit. <laughs> on today's episode of Madge Unmuted. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Madge Unmuted. I am your hostess, Madge Madigan. Welcome. So glad to have you back again. And with me, as always, is Fitz, my Tis lovely I. and talented producer. Tis, Tis I. Fitz. Tis I. Got me in the mood. I, I know. Sorry. Okay. So should I tell everybody what's going on? Yeah. I, think I you should had clue people in what's going on. Today's topic is. What to do when everything you had planned takes a giant shit. <laughs> Not literally, but, you know, figuratively. Yeah, figurative so, shit. So I had this old fashioned episode and um, I was all ready to go. But like I was trying to set up another shot here of like a wide shot of me like walking. So. So, like, you could see what I'm wearing because I was going to talk about that shit. And I tried to set it up. And then my whole tr one tripod fell over with my camera. And, like, it broke. And now it, I ha I have two, but I just had to kind of rig break? it back together. And No, but I was worried because it was, like, out of focus for a little bit. And then I turned it back on and I turned it off and turned it back on. And then it was okay. But, like, so... So I was going to do like this. Okay, watch. So here is a, do you, pre pretend this is a full shot. Okay, okay, pretend we can see you. For those of you listening. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Magic Muted. <laughs> this is what I'm wearing today. Looks good. I see Don't glittery. you like it? And here. And and boots. And my Bootsy. Boots. Bootsy Collins. Oh my God. I hope I'm not showing anything like, you know, <laughs> any of my flaps hanging out. <laughs> I mean, fla flab, not fl <laughs> flab. Your flaps. <laughs> so, on today's episode. <laughs> So, oh, oh, Madge. Oh, Madge. <laughs> now that's, I'm winded. That's like plans. Yeah, I'm winded. <laughs> I'm winded for you. Oh, my God. And it's hot as shit today. Right? Like, for what the October hell? 22nd. What the hell's going on with that? Western New York. I know. Do you, know geez, you know, I cannot fucking wait until this election is over. Right. And you know, what's funny. I said that last time too. I said that I in, said in 2016, 2015, I said in, yeah, 2015. It was like, can this be over? And then it was, and I was sad. Right. Like 2015. Where, I mean, when like the um, campaigning started, I'm just, I, I'm exhausted. Aren't all of you? Jesus Christ. Everybody is shaking you know, their heads. Yes. Nothing. Yes, they are. I can't explain it. Uh, yet another anomaly of Dunkirk, New York. Uh, yeah, if you go back and watch the last episode with Christina Knopf, which I love, and that was a huge success, you will get more insight into this area. But anyway, um, so this is kind of a red area. And people a while back were, were really angry. And now I think like... Everybody knows they like just like I just don't want to talk about it. I don't want to argue about shit. I don't want to waste my valuable time. I'd rather laugh about, you know, dick jokes. I don't know. But anyway, I've been trying to find a way to to be more positive, more. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Try Well, so, so not more positive in general, but but trying to be better at how I react to bad things and how I react to disappointments and, oh. and things like that. Like That's today's show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
but like recently hey, i should just show the boots again yes when in doubt throw the boots up wow let me make sure the camera's up so you can do that again <laughs> now see if i tried to do that i swear to god i would like my wow that's impressive <laughs> my my just gonna sit like this the rest of the day. <laughs> but now the camera's focusing on your on your boot and not your face <laughs> Oh, careful. Jeez. That, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get, if I tried to put my leg up like that, um, part of me would snap. It would, oh. it would shatter into, into a million pieces. So guess what I have to do on Friday? Part of me is, oh, you yes. just don't, can't see right. it. Anyway. Okay. What, what do you, yeah. you have to do something on Friday? What? Yeah. I have to, well, I have to get something done, I guess. I have to do a colonoscopy. To get a colonoscopy. Oh, and Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Here's the part. Here's the terrible part. I just had one in August. Yeah. No. Yeah. But I'm so full of shit that uh, they had to do <gasps> another one. I did the prep stuff, and it wasn't. An, it didn't clean me out enough. So when they went in there, they're like, "Yo, we can't see everything. You're gonna have to do this again." And I was like, "No." But yep, I have to do it again. So how does that happen? I don't know. But how how can you not? I don't know. I was I was literally pissing out of my asshole. There was nothing to come out. There was nothing else to come out, and yet there, it wasn't all gone. I don't know what the hell they they need to like. Shove Give a you a power wash up, wash there. up yeah, there. Seriously, seriously, really need to take a <laughs> bottle washer. Yes. God. Yeah. Um. So. You know, I can't. Speaking of colonoscopies, I can't do the prep. I have a lot of issues um, and I get, yeah, I know. Um, I can't, my stomach is really sensitive. Like I have IBS and GERD and all kinds of shit. Anyway. Um, so when I try and do like, you're not supposed to eat. Right. Right. And then if I don't eat and then I do the prep, it makes me double over in pain. Oh, yeah. So I, I can't take the pills and the, the stuff. It doesn't agree with me. Like, I don't, you know, I really don't care about getting a colonoscopy. I mean, that's not, so I'm not like making it up. I literally, literally it, it is the prep that I was oh, yeah. doubled over in pain. And um, so, like, they gave me a couple different, like, well, here, try this instead. And I'm like, no, it's doing stuff on an empty stomach that makes me feel like I'm being stabbed in the upper abdomen. Yeah. And so then I had to settle for poop in a box. Oh. I have to, I do cola guard. Poop in a box. It's what everyone's getting for Christmas this year. It's my year. poop in a box. Can you imagine if you got them if you got them mixed up with something and you're like, oh, oh my god, Aunt Madge finally sent our present. Uh, <laughs> great. Apparently she they... likes corn. <laughs> <Huh>? Yeah. I... <laughs> she sent us a casserole. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh it's a fruit God. cake that was interesting oh. recipe you made a little salty <laughs> oh man little, yeah the prep is it's is a little the bad gooey part. <laughs> the prep is the part mm. that i don't that i can't really handle um the the colonoscopy yeah. colonoscopy itself is no big deal they give me drugs i lay down i fall asleep i wake up and they're like right. okay but yeah, but I just been, I've been so like stressed out as about I mean, having to get a colonoscopy. No, not, not about the colonoscopy, but it's just thing like things happen and I'm trying not to like blow up and, and be all Irish. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. So back to that, like, what do you do when things don't go as planned? Um, that's really hard. Yeah, punt. Yes. No, yes, you do. it is. You do. And I, I got a rude awakening, um, or should I call it maybe baptism by fire with that? I mean, when, when I got divorced in 2001, I mean, that was like all the lesson I needed 
in when things don't go as planned. But then it, you know, it led to a a long domino clusterfuck of when things don't go as planned. So right. I got used to it. But um, you know, what I've got to say that my kids say, you know, we went through a lot. Like I, I've said this story several times that um, their dad and I got divorced, and then um. Hmm. He went MIA. He moved out of state and um, <clears throat> and he, I didn't get, you know, uh, my child support anymore or I didn't get any help. I, they, you know, I, I never get got any relief. So um, and I wasn't working at the time I was a stay at home mom. So that was a whole like. Crash course in. What do I do when nothing, you know, um, but my kids say that that actually prepared them much better for life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like, like, like it wasn't fun. No, but, <laughs> but yeah. And, and, and considering what happened, that could have, that could have went a completely different way and it, it, yeah. and they could be worse off, but that's not. So that's, that's like testament to you and, and, you know, mm. kudos to you Thanks. for, Whatever you did, well, you might not have realized it, but however you handled things <laughs> in their eyes, it was, the, well, you know, it was positive. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't perfect. Oh, well, you nobody's know, perfect except for my wife. I mean, oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> Kelly is. Um, but no, I mean, it, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't perfect by any means, um, but I tried to do all the right things, like just... I, I've been watching this show, 90 Day Fiance. Have you ever watched oh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these people, <laughs> they like meet somebody online and they fall in love. So um, then they just, we're destined to be together. We got to get married. We got to be together. And then they go and do that. And then they try and figure shit out after the fact, <laughs> like you live in another country because that's the whole premise of this 90 day thing is that it's because uh, um, what do you, we do you, like you're in it. One of you is one country, one's in another. And you got to you you get like a special visa to visit each other. And then you have 90 days to figure out if you or, or to get married or something. I oh, still, really? they never really explain it anymore. They probably did like the first season, but now <laughs> it's just all about the drama of the couple. But like, there's this one, like a lot of them, it, it fries me when they have kids and they're like, okay, this one couple, this is so ridiculous. She lives in, she lives in downstate. New York, I don't know, you know, probably like Westchester County or something like that. Um, or, or Yonkers or something. And and she's like 43 and her she has two teenage sons. And um, she married a guy, she met a guy in Ireland and married him like three years ago, but didn't tell anybody. Like oh. the kids, her mother, or whatever. So this, the, in this, they're on this season, and the big thing is like they were gonna go f over for a trip and finally have the boy. Like I don't know if the guy ever. Came, I'm guessing he never came over to the U.S. And like, I don't know. I'm thinking I smell fish because maybe this guy has some sort of record or something because he's never come over to the U.S. But anyway. And um, and he's got a little girl. So they said, well, we're going to go, you know, on this trip to meet this guy, Sean, I guess his name. Go figure. <laughs> and um, so like we're going to go meet Sean. She's like, oh, but, you know, in like her confessionals by herself, she's like, well, I got to tell him that that we're already married. They don't know. And that, you know, well, I got to see if they're okay with it. Cause then I'd like to call Ireland home. And like, she's like talking about moving her teenage boys to Ireland. Oh my God. And their father is here and they're all of their f family is here. And they're in high school. Okay. Yeah. So that's some selfish shit right there. Yes. Like the last fucking thing I would ever do is 
I don't even know where to start on this one. Like one, go marry someone without my kids knowing them and approving <laughs> Two, just going and marrying them anyway. You know, just I I've never spent this much time with a guy and I go and marry it. You know what I mean? It's like when you see somebody over overseas like that, you've seen them what a, a week at a time at most or something. I mean, yeah. I'm 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 sorry. I I I stick to that like you need to be with somebody for four seasons to realize if it's to figure out if it's going to work, to make sure that it's going to work. Four seasons. Do you know what like I mean? Lost or a uh, year. Gilligan's a Island. year. <laughs> <laughs> four seasons of that show apparently. Yeah. Um no, like I will tell you a story that I didn't I'm I'm kind of ashamed of now, but um, well, I'll tell you, a boy, this podcast. <laughs> I was going to say this episode may turn into something. So I met my ex husband um, when I was twenty five. What the hell? It was ninety one. So mm. yeah, it was January no, I was twenty. I was eighteen. January of ninety one. So um, I met him and he was he was two years younger than me. So he was 23. What? You were 25. So <laughs> that's, I know, whatever. That's, to I me, so, you're legal. You could like have fun. I was like, oh, I'm fucking 18. I can't do anything. Oh, OK. Yeah. I just oh, thought God. like you were you're giving me shit because like I'm old. And, no. But anyway, so we meet nine. and then <laughs> then you could flip me off. I OK. I had been with I had a high school. Er, kind of college boyfriend and then we went we did junior senior year and then um he was going to grad school at nc state after after college so i'm like and my parents were like we're last kids out of the house we're retiring moving to arizona bye and i'm yeah. like i want to fucking move to a patio home in tucson i'm like why you couldn't have stayed in new york while i you know, figure out some shit. So um, they're like, why did you go down with him? So anyway, so I move, I go down with him and then we got engaged and then I called it off. And cause I was like, what am I doing? I, this isn't, this isn't my person. No offense to him, but you know, so, so I cut, I moved back up to Rochester and within the six months or something, I meet my ex-husband and I'm like, okay, now I know like this one's for sure. Now I know. And like, I thought, cause I had had this other, other experience. I was so sure. And then I, I turned 26 and I'm like, okay. So I'm embarrassed to say this now after four months, almost five months, five months, we got engaged. And then in when we, it we got married just under a, a year mark. So now I cringe at I got that. You beat. Like, oh, I got really? You beat. Oh, yeah, I got you beat. So, so real quick. So, like, I'm like, oh, now I know for sure. This is the one. This is the one. Well, I was sure and I was sure of him when he was not drinking. <laughs> uh. um, but but. I hadn't spent enough time to let that other guy come out and yeah, but I got three amazing kids out of it and you know what happened happened. But anyway, um, so what, what you, you said, you got me beat. Yeah. So my, so, so Kelly and I knew each other for eight years uh, before we got together. Technically we really only dated so we were in a, so she moved back to Rochester because we, we met in New York. She moved back to Rochester. Um, oh, and we kept in, I think you in, told me this a long time ago. I, yeah, we kept ahead. in touch and, and then, um, they well, haven't heard it. So it's okay. <laughs> she came back, she came back to Florida and I was on a date and I got a, I got, a, you know, I was a beeper. I had a beeper. So I got a page and she's like, Hey, I'm in town. I'm like, we're going. I took my date me, to the party that they were at. And uh, long and short of it, she says, oh, we're going to be together. Wait, and wait, we wait, wait. not dated yet. We were wait, just friends. Wait, Can we back it up real, <laughs> real quick? I, I, I was trying to make a joke and I spoke over you so I didn't hear. Um, Fucked it up. 
I know. Who was at a who was at a party? Kelly was was you, Kelly was visiting from Rochester. She was down in Florida at a party. I was out okay. on a date with with someone. Oh, and she paged me and said, "Hey, guess who's in town?" And I said, "Holy <laughs> shit!" So I told I told my date. I said, "Hey, you want to go to a house party?" She's like, "Yeah." So we went to the house party, and I ended up spending the whole time with Kelly. And the date didn't know anyone. She was like sitting at the table. <laughs> It was so bad. She um, like fuck you. I'm out of here. Totally. Oh wait, so it was, was pre Uber. So yeah, it totally was. <laughs> it was pre everything. Jesus. She so so Kelly and I really didn't. We really didn't date until and then I decided we had a long distance relationship over the phone and and mail. We used to write letters to each other. Wait. So after <clears> that party, you decided to date. So the, the interesting thing is after that party, she like got involved with some other guy. She was going to move that back down to Florida. She was like, I want to be with you. I'm, I'm going to move back down to Florida. And then suddenly it to was the like, other guy or to you. She wanted to move back down to Florida to be oh. with me. But then okay. after that, she met a guy in Rochester and they got together and then she went silent on me. I was like, what the fuck? What's going on? I thought you were coming back down. And she's like, well, I guess that's not really happening. And then, so then I stopped talking to her. I was like, fuck you, you piece of shit. You totally dicked me over. Um, and a, and a lot of years passed. Thing. A lot of years passed. Oh, okay. And then I finally called her to see how she was doing. And she was, she starts crying. She's like, I've missed you so much. I made such a mistake by going with that guy. He was a douchebag. Da, 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 da. So I said, all right, well, I've been waiting for you for eight years. What the hell's the difference? You know, let's, let's do this. So we started dating long distance over the phone long and distance. stuff like that. She came down to Florida, um, mm -hmm. stayed with me for a couple of days and then went back and I said, I'm going to move to New York. I'm going to move to Rochester. So I moved to Rochester. We've not, we didn't date. We didn't did really you like have a job, and, but I did not have a job. <laughs> I did not have a job. <laughs> I moved to Rochester. I said, I'll, I'll find work. And I lived with Came her in Webster. Words. It was, it was a really, really tough thing. <laughs> Eventually I, I moved back down to Florida because my old job called me back and I was like, all right, let's do that. So she, then so she, did moved she down. go. It's so confusing. Oh, it's so confusing. Okay. <laughs> I moved up. It didn't work out. I moved back down. Then she, like, I wasn't even. I was still driving. I was in North Carolina and she called me. She said, I just decided I'm moving to Florida with you. And I'm like, okay. So she moved down to Florida with me. And then, um, you know what? I'm getting myself confused already. Yes. So before she moved down, I went up and I, and I, and I, uh, proposed. So basically we lived together from December to January. I moved back down to Florida. She stayed in New York and then she decided she was going to move to Florida but that wasn't until the summer. I flew up to get her in July and proposed. We moved down and lived oh, together. So, okay. so, but we never like, I didn't know her. We never went yeah. out on dates. I barely knew, like I knew her as a friend and I knew like her personality and stuff, but I didn't know what she was like at all. It was like, a total crapshoot. Yeah. It was a total crapshoot. And I crapped out a couple so times. So you should have been on that show. I should have been on that show. <laughs> but I, I mean. I would not have renounced my citizenship for her, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't you know, know if I have you beat, but it was it was still, it's still a story that says, I can't believe I did that. Right. So, like, the thing about my ex-husband is that. I I lived where this was in Rochester. He grew up there. His parents were there. All his family were there. Everybody he'd grown up was there. He went to McQuaid. Everybody was there. Everybody that he freaking went to college with now lived there. Like he, they had this enormous he went to it was a whole community. And, they, and yeah. So like it wasn't like I didn't know this guy from Adam. It's like I 
you know what I mean? It's yeah. like I had an entire town of people who know this guy and think he's the best thing since right. sliced bread. And and you know, he really was. I was gonna say until it's not it's not usual that an entire town is wrong, but Right. Well, I mean it it was just one of those things where you don't right. know what goes on behind closed doors and some some people can't handle their emotions and or you know, um I know several people that you don't know what you don't know. You grow up learning to communicate one way and that's all, you know, and it could be well, the wrong way. And, well, and my, that's my point. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's not compatible or if it's not the wrong way, it's just not compatible with that other person. Right. So like on a, well, well, and sometimes it's like seriously flawed. Um, just, this is a, quick tangent on this but it's on the you don't know what you don't know thing somebody was talking the other day about certain certain groups in society or certain people you know they don't need a handout just pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and it's like if you don't know what that looks like if everybody around you like if all you know oh so when we were Well, when I was young, you know, in the 70s, there were people that all they knew was what their father did is you finish high school or sometimes just drop out of high school and go work at the factory and you until you retire. And then that's it. And you never leave town and you never whatever. No aspirations because they never knew that you could aspire. Right. Nor had they any idea how to ever go about it. Do you know what I mean? And people like, you know, oh, there's people in poverty that, you know, why don't you just pull yourself up? Because they don't know. What do they call Uh, that? Like institutional poverty or something like that, where where poverty breeds poverty breeds poverty. And then if you if that's all, you know, then how do you know you just like what you said? You don't know what you don't know. I don't know how to get out of this because no one taught me to get out of this. But the rich guy who whose parents were really good with money taught the kid how to be really good with money. So when he grows up, he's really good with money. Right. But there's also like, you know, I didn't I had never dealt with poverty. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know anything about, um, you know, domestic issues and and spousal abuse and then when then when he left and then i didn't have any money i didn't i didn't know anything about assistance i didn't know anything about the legal system like how to track him down how to you know whatever i had to like thank god i was in the age of the internet and i could start googling shit and finding out but it's like i had to really nobody in my family knew Nobody, no, they're all like, you know, professionals and, and married and everybody's, you know, the, the life of Riley. They didn't have any of these issues. And, and, and actually some of them were, and this isn't, this isn't anything bad on them, but it's like some of them were, well, you should have, you, sh- you should have, um, you know, like had enough stuff on in your own name or set yourself up. So this didn't happen. It's like, who the fuck plans for this? We had three kids under the age of six and everything was great. I didn't know he was, you know, it's like, I'm sorry. Life does. And, and, and my, I thought, you know, I was staying home because he, you know, flew all over the place with his job. It's like, and I not like, I'm, I don't have just happen to be a doctor in my spare time or I could, you know, <laughs> save money. So anyway, you know, you don't you don't know what you don't know. And um, I, I just that really bothers me when people are like every, every man for himself. They got to figure it out. Well, anyway, I forget. Why the hell did we start all? <laughs> I don't know. D- <clears throat> so. I remember why this all started because I was talking about that ninety day fiance. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was and and ninety and minute because tangent I was, by Madge unmuted. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that ninety minute, you know, show and 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 so like I didn't date. I didn't have a boyfriend for like eight years. I mean, I dated. You know, but then he he left and like I never had any time to my I had the kids 24 seven. So but I also was like, 
I just, I'm not bringing anybody else around. I'm not dating anybody. This, they don't need this. You know, they're, it was bad enough. Their father before he left was living with a friend, a friend from work that had babysat them before. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I am not going to fuck this situation up anymore. So I'm just not going to add any confusion. I will have my time when I have my time. So but these people on this show, it's like this lady is like it was it's funny. They they were over in Ireland and the boys went home. And the one boy who's like 17 was like pissed. He's like, I'm not going to fucking uproot my whole life and move to Ireland with some guy that you know what i mean it's like yeah. bad enough you move your kid to like i'm in new york you have to you move them to pennsylvania or right. or florida you know you're moving them across the ocean and um so the mother who was like right out of you know br the bronx brooklyn queens wherever and she's like so how did the boys handle it and and they're like <laughs> well you know i don't think very well she's like yeah, maybe you should have thought of that, like before <laughs> you got married or when you got married three years ago. <laughs> I'm like, you go, Donna, you tell them. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I, 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 these fucking people. I mean, I, I, that's when you know these people put their own. But the they heart put themselves wants what the ahead. heart wants. Oh God, give me a break. Well, you know. <laughs> Going back to that, the heart wants what the heart wants. You know, that's a great sentiment when you're 17. <laughs> right. um, and I kind of thought that like when I met my ex-husband, I'm like, OK, well, you know, back in the day, I heard all kinds of stories of of, you know, grandma, and grandpa. They knew each other for two weeks and they got married right. or, you know, so and so. Knew it. I mean. Yeah. And all these short term things are we and that just seemed to be kind of par for the course back then. I, but I think it was more because that was what you were supposed to do, like. Like how in other cultures, cultures have, you know, arranged marriages because that's the next step you're supposed to take in life. That's the preordained thing so these people are like oh, okay i'm out of school now i i got time to find me a wife or time to find me a husband and have to get have kids and whatever so i think it was more like a i mean yes there was true love like my parents was true love but like they met in college and dated and they finished and so it wasn't like a this is what we're supposed to do but you know i don't know so so that's why i i justified like okay this time i know and i'm not oh that was the other thing when i got engaged to my college boyfriend i i made the I set the wedding date like a year and a half out in the future cuz i think i didn't really want to get <laughs> married i mean i know i mean i was only what 22 23 when we yeah. got engaged after college that's young it's young yeah and i and and so i said it that far and so this time i was thinking well you're gonna prove it this time by getting married right away you know this is what you want and you know blah blah blah, blah. and <sighs> now, it didn't work out but did, i don't know There's, did your ex-husband come from did like his father do what he he did to you did he did that to his mom or is that something that he learned from his father yeah in in a sense i've never got his father is um is is since now passed uh, like about five five six seven years ago he passed um i never really saw him drink so i don't know if it was a it, the drinking thing but i know he had a an anger problem yeah and because i found out later that he was really um verbally abusive to my kids which I hate to say all this and sorry to bring this up kids, but you know, but yes, I did realize that that was learned behavior. Yeah. And it's a vicious and cycle and it, and it, it's, it is, it happens with, with a lot of, with good things and bad things. Yeah. You know? I mean, he's gotten sober now and I, I, I don't believe he has a, a, a I mean, I'm not, I haven't been in him been, been with him in a you know 
I, I never was in him <laughs> in the past, but um, <laughs> let alone now. So um, I never, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, he's just, the, the kids think he's now just like the best thing since sliced bread and fun dad and great and everything. And, and I'm happy they have that. Um, so, uh, um, but it, but it, but they, they, they talked to talked it through with him for a long time. So it wasn't just like, it's masking something like, yeah, well, Hey, I'm back now. Uh, you know, yeah, they're like, Oh no, you're going to have to, yeah, you're going to have to earn this, you know? And, um, and he, you know, he did. And, and, and they, they have a good relationship now, but, um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's like with his, uh, current lady. <laughs> I know the one he left me for, that was pretty rocky, but he was still drinking. So, um, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. You make, so, hey. you make silly decisions when you drink, you do stupid shit when you drink. At least speaking for myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't drink I, anymore. I've I've stopped doing that. I'm because you know, yeah, I can I know how to tie one on and I still do, but I've I've stopped the like but around here there's not like too much stupid shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like I go home, I go to the country club, I have some drinks and I come home, you know, it's like, what am I doing? I'm not going to I I don't I don't feel the need to like uh, I, I got John. I don't go yeah. out carousing. I don't make stupid mistakes getting involved with stupid men because right. even if it wasn't for John, I just I don't think I would ever date a guy. <laughs> I'm just at a point in my life where like I'm good. And um, not because I'm bitter. It's just like, it's, it's fucking exhausting. Um, but anyway, so yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't drive drunk and um, I don't know. I just don't do stupid shit. I say stupid shit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I say a lot of stupid shit. I constantly I I think I'm say one of stupid shit. I think I'm one of the, I also, I think I'm one of those repeaters now when I, when I drink, I, you know, like, uh, so, um, they tell so you about guys, one way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what do you, what do you, so what are you guys doing after this? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so what are you guys doing after this? <laughs> Did I already ask you that? Shit. I'm sorry. Wait, what are you guys doing? Yeah, exactly. Hey, you know what? You know what? You know what? I just got I just got a new car. Yeah, you already told us that three times, Madge. <laughs> Shit, I do that without well, drinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there is that too. Yeah. At fifty nine. Yeah. Kelly and I tell and, each other shit all the time that we've already told each other oh like God. twice already. J yeah, John I yeah, John constantly tells me repeat things and I'm I was prided myself that i didn't do that and i guess <laughs> now that i do not as much every once in a while I, and i get really bummed when he tells me that he's like yeah i know you already told me that i'm like yeah seriously i know you start to go oh shit oh. really i can tell you every minute of every day what I tell you that he's like yeah like last week i'm like and then like I, i'll argue and so now i'm finally like just shut the fuck up you already know so. right. like how would he know if you didn't tell him i psychic? know <laughs> uh, anyway so night don't watch 90 day fiance because it's a lot of selfish people on there. A lot of stupid fucking people on there. Well, that's pretty oh, much I just every reality we, show. I just thought I'd move over to Thailand and move in with the parents. I didn't think we needed to discuss it. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. That about does it for today. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> Well, that was uh, fun. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe, <laughs> kids, before you leave, because this was so fucking riveting today. Yeah, uh, tell your friends. You totally made like, it this share, whole subscribe. way. <laughs> yes, we did. Like, and I'm late for happy hour. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, um, hey, subscribe. And uh, next week, I'm supposed to have guests. Let's see if this one craps out on me again, too. <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, if, you'd if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please DM me or comment below. You should make or them whatever. put down a deposit so they don't back out. I'm telling you that this is a this is a phenomenon that that does not discriminate because a lot yeah. of my clients have guests booked and they flake out. They forgot. I, I, I think people don't think of what's involved on my end i think they think it's like you know like a phone call it's like well that's exactly right just not gonna call. i've been yeah, saying that. It's like, people think it's just a zoom call like we're just having a zoom call it's like no this is right. a podcast recording right i have studio time you set aside i have reserved paid studio time with you you have op you have made a, an a, you have booked the time so no one else can use the time so if I don't, you know, and then I've taken my time. I had to get all this going today, right? which I don't like to do. I don't like to get, I don't like to get all made up and get dressed and get a shower. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I'm just, uh, you they know, must love you it at takes the a lot club. at my age. I know. <laughs> Madge is here again. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if I book you, fucking show up. Right. And thanks for joining us on this episode of Magic Muted. <laughs> thanks, Fitz from Rock Fox Studios. I appreciate it. And until next week, we'll see you on the next episode of Match Unmuted. Ciao. Bye.